Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment of Video Dvar with Rabbi Chaitovsky here at BMHBJ. With a little bit more than two weeks to go to Pesach, I thought that I would spend a moment or two and talk to you about a word that instills fear and loathing in Jews around the world at this time. And that word is chametz, leaven. We associate chametz with Pesach. We have to get rid of chametz from our homes. We have to sell it. We have to nullify it. We burn it. We can't see it. Can't find it in our property in our, or in our possession. Can't benefit from it. And we know that chametz is so closely associated with Pesach that we might overlook the fact that chametz also has other associations. A couple of them occur in this week's Torah portion. This week we begin the third book of the Torah, the book of Vayikra, which deals primarily with rules and regulations concerning the priests and the Levites who were going to be ministering in the Mishkan that had just been built at the end of the book of Exodus. And the Torah portion begins this week by describing the five different categories of sacrifices that a Jew could bring. Sacrifices, as we know, were part and parcel of our ancient mode of worship. And in one of those sacrifices, known as the mincha, a flower offering, the Torah says the following, Kol ha-mincha asher takrivu l'ashem, any flower offering that you offer to God, lo teyase chametz, cannot be chametz. I always thought of chametz as only associated with Pesach. Why am I not allowed to have chametz as part of this offering on the altar? And if you look at our commentators, you will see a common thread. The commentators describe chametz as something much larger than the simple food product which contains it. Chametz represents an attitude. Chametz represents something negative. It represents arrogance or pride or haughtiness. According to the Rambam, Chametz represents a link to idolatry. In his opinion, much of ancient idolatrous pagan practice required the use of Chametz. So he says, by not having Chametz, we are making a statement that is pro-monotheism and against idolatry. The Baal HaTurim, in a more global statement, says Chametz simply represents the evil inclination. And by not bringing Chametz to the altar, we are expressing our desire to banish the evil inclination from the altar or any of the sacred precincts of the Mishkan and later the Temple. And by removing Chametz from our homes, we are actually removing Chametz from ourselves. We are getting rid of the negative attitudes, the bad behaviors, and we make an effort to purge those and revert to something a little bit simpler and more sacred and a little bit purer. All of those things paint Chametz in a negative way. And that's okay because on Pesach, Chametz is negative. And in regard to the altar, it's also negative. But there is something about Chametz and its antithesis, Matzah, that also needs to be highlighted. The contemporary rabbinic scholar of Yoel ben Nun says that the reason we don't have chametz on the altar is because chametz represents the completion of a process. And the person bringing a sacrifice is not quite complete. And therefore, it's limited to only having an unleavened type of offering. Because the person recognizes that I have a little bit of growing to do. In one of the offerings, Rav Bin Nun points out, we actually bring all three kinds of flour mixed with water and baked. There's a matzah, there is a slightly softer type of baking, baked product that resembles a pita, and then there's the fully formed loaf. That's for the Thanksgiving offering, where you 
Thank God for saving you from some potentially tragic or dangerous situation. And we recognize the growth process going from matzah all the way up to the fully formed loaf. That's just part of human growth and human potential, this journey. On Shavuot, he points out, in contrast to the offering here, the two loaves of bread that are brought are fully formed loaves, not matzah. What is this link between the Pesach offering, we're only eating matzah, and the Shavuot offering that is fully formed bread? He explains matzah is the beginning of a journey. Chametz is the end of a journey. Pesach marks the beginning of our journey. It will be inappropriate to have bread on Pesach because on Pesach we only achieved one thing, our freedom. We didn't have a context for it. We didn't quite know what to do with it. We learned what to do with it and we committed to putting that into practice on Shavuot. So on Pesach, we only eat matzah because we are at the beginning of the process. Seven weeks later, we end up at challah, fully formed chametz loaves, which represent the fullness of our potential. So chametz is not so much a negative. It just represents a stage in our growth that all of us must begin from. All of us must start from. Pesach is the holiday of beginnings. Chametz has no role at the beginning. Chametz only comes later. When the context of Torah gives freedom its fully formed message. Have a great Shabbat. Have a wonderful Pesach. And we'll see you in Shalom.